What? what? And then he sl- reset to yeah. jump ahead. I've never seen that. That's crazy. Oh, oh ooh, we no. missed it. Missed it. Oh, no. <laughs> everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Deb's React to Evergate speedrun. I'm super excited to be here. I'm Kent, the team lead of Evergate. And hi, I'm Ariel. I do a lot of the uh, coding and visual effects. I believe that we're watching uh, Black Rose in speedrun. I'm super excited about watching him that because he's been with us since really early on in the Evergate element uh and we've been watching him speed run feels like since the beginning yeah definitely over a year at this point maybe a year and a half of having a speed run community very involved but honestly i feel like they were involved since even before that yeah well part of our kickstarter we had a uh evergate speed running challenge um so uh that's when we got this fun group of people together who were excited about speedrunning Evergate. Uh, and since then, it's kind of blossomed into a really cool um, community. Uh, mm-hmm. So we'll see what kind of fun tricks Black Rose has for us. Yep. And I will say that as far as speedrunning is concerned, uh, this intro scene has the most blocking, unskippable cutscenes ever. Uh, definitely we could have done a better job at making these skippable and we always get made fun of for that by our speedrun community. So if you're unfamiliar with Evergate, uh, this is Ki. She's a soul who has just arrived in a- the afterlife and she's just been given a power. Uh, it's called the soul flame. And she is able to channel energy from the afterlife uh, in this beam that uh, powers up when you connect it to the white uh, we call it soul pollen or the source. Um, and so now we're entering into the library, which is kind of the main hub of the game. Uh, get some beautiful music, uh, that Mike made for Evergate. It's, uh, really fun. Although it, I think Black Rose is running right now in speed run mode. So some of the music cues, uh, won't line up with the visuals. Uh, we want to make sure that we get to the meet as fast as possible. Yeah, and more importantly, have consistent timing across runs. So some of the music in the game is actually uh, dynamic, where it responds to uh, the timing of the camera, you know, plays music at all the right times and stuff. So uh, speedrun mode pretty much disables that to make sure everyone gets consistent timing in their runs. All right, so we're opening up the first book, which will take us to the first series of levels. You want to explain the boost crystal? Yeah, so the whole game is uh, pretty much about encountering different types of crystals that affect your mobility and your puzzle solving abilities. Uh, So in this first world, you only have this boost crystal. Uh, So as you can see, as the as he's shooting through these crystals, they're they're getting boost in the opposing direction from where they're aiming. And that's all about, you know, jumping around the level. So normally when you start the game, to use a soul flame, you slow down time so you can carefully aim where you're going. But obviously the speedrunners don't need that. They're just rapid firing the soul flame. Yeah, and I actually think the the instant fire wasn't something that we had until our speedrunning community got more involved. <laughs> and they, they were like, hey, can you please give us this? Got more angry with us. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, we need to go faster. Uh, that said, I feel like there are still times where people use the precise aim when they need to. Although we did end up giving an award, I think. we, we uh, The final cut of the game has a trophy you can get for beating the whole game with only instant fire and never slowing down to aim. So that was a fun one to add. So right here, he's unlocked uh, an artifact. And if you um, beat levels either fast uh, or 100% complete, like break all the crystals um, or collect all the we call them petals, you can earn what we call essence. And then those essence will unlock um, abilities 
or artifacts. And so the one that he just got was the Lucky Frog, which gives you higher boost, um, which I imagine he'll use the Lucky Frog artifact. You see it at the top left. There's a trade-off of like, do you want to do levels more like 100% to get more essence, to get better um, artifacts, or do you just want to speed run it through and take the bare minimum artifacts that you get from that? And I think there's a trade-off there. Ooh, ooh, he messed up. Lost time on, on one of the easy ones. Come on, Black Rose, come on. So there's proof he could have done a better run. <laughs> Tough to get a full half hour perfect. Yeah. Very, very impressive. I, I just recently did a run uh, that was about oh, 46 nice. or 47 minutes. Nice. And this one is, we assume, somewhere in the half hour range? Yeah. So, pretty impressive. It's just so fun to see it run so smoothly. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the things that we were really excited about when we were developing Evergate was that it's kind of, um, it's definitely a puzzle and platformer components to it. Um, but we wanted to keep it open for like creativity. Um, and so while there's a lot of restrictions, like your soul flame only works, oof, died right there. Um, it only works if you connect it with the source, that white, uh, white lines on the levels, there's still a ton of creativity that especially speedrunners have figured out how to use and take advantage of. Um, and when, so like when they, you know, I guess they call it cheesing a level, uh, that doesn't bother me. Uh, it's like really exciting to see people be super creative. So, so one of the actual metrics we had when we were designing the levels, we, we were like, oh, the game needs to be beatable. So we made sure that all levels were beatable without like excessive chaining. Like if you were uh, kind of a, a lower skilled player maybe you would you would go through the long routes of the game but one of our parts of our rubric was like there's interesting solutions outside of the ordinary and we would we would write all of our levels to make sure there was always some sort of either speed running option or some sort of exciting unexpected thing that we could find and to our surprise uh, the uh, speed running community found things way more interesting than what we had designed <laughs> for, which was great. Yeah, we were like, he, 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 this will be what they'll use. And then they did something way cooler than what we did. Um, and yeah. that's fun. So this, now he's this on- This level right here yeah, it, yeah. is one of my favorite examples of the community giving us a suggestion that we actually end up putting in the game. This little hack right here, they said, oh, please, please, can you make that source shootable just so we can do this little exploit? So that the beginning of this level uh, is something that we actually took feedback to enable in the speed run. <laughs> we we hit the, moved the hitbox just a little bit to the left so they could hit that. Um, so so this level uh, we, we kind of skipped over both of these, but she, she's moving so fast. Um, we have the Earth Crystal that creates a platform underneath you, and then this book is all about the the Fire Crystal, and it burns up the source when you use it. Uh, but then it can have other cool effects like lighting these dragons or moving blocks. It's really impressive how consistent he can be with some of these really far reaching shots. So we found that a lot of the top speed runs have to be on like uh, mouse and keyboard because the mouse gives you that precision really quickly. You can definitely speed run the game on the switch like with a controller we actually designed the whole game controller first um so we knew it was going to be playable but the, the speed running aspect is definitely more consistent with a mouse i'd say there's oh. there's some heated debate in our speed running community about the benefits uh of each of them the keyboard or the, the mouse mm -hmm. or sorry the keyboard or the controller with controller, we give a little bit of aim assist where it will kind of lock onto crystals for you. Um, uh, but with the mouse, you can be really precise. So some speedrunners even have both the keyboard ready and the controller, and they'll like bounce between them for certain levels, uh, which I find ridiculous because like reorienting your brain uh, for each one of those is crazy. Yeah, I do like that hybrid is a valid strategy. Ooh, this uh, one's going to be good. This is the, the swap crystal. And so if you don't know what's happening, it goes by really fast. 
Um, but basically, if you use your soul flame through the swap crystal, you move to wherever you are aiming at. So he's going to be zipping through the level very fast. That's a beautiful solution. I like that. Uh, so the swap crystals don't only swap the place of the player. They also swap the position. Oh, wow, dude, he could have clearly an imperfect run. You should definitely trim off a minute from this one. <laughs> On Black Rose. Uh, yeah, but, but the swap crystals will not only swap places with you, but also the boxes that you hit, it can swap places uh, with them. So if you ever see boxes hopping around, that's because the swap crystal is being used with them. Also, Six I don't know if we mentioned it yet, but we are using a different artifact now, the uh, Firecracker Tail. Which uh, increases the move speed, so he's running around faster. Yes. Oh, he got lucky yep. with that one. That's such yeah. a hard angle to hit, but it saves so much time. Wow. Just so smooth. So smooth. Now we're getting some lore, which the speedrunners blow through as fast as they can. There are also speed readers, not just speedrunners. <laughs> so we're like the overarching lore here that's happening is that we're we're getting presented with memories. These are books of memories, uh, but we're finding out they're not keys memories. So whose memories are they if they aren't yours? You want to explain this crystal? Yeah, so here we have the arrow crystal. Uh, the way this works is it actually is sourceable completely on its own, which means you can shoot it without hitting any of the uh, white source on the other end of your shot. Uh, it will shoot out a little arrow, and that arrow projectile can break all sorts of things like boxes, walls, whatever. So it's part of the puzzling mechanic. And actually right here, uh, we introduced a new game mechanic, this caribou, so you kind of shoot the caribou to unlock the exit gate. And we have a few challenges that we've set up. I don't know if you saw this, but one of the fun parts about having the arrow crystal be source is that you can use it to break other crystals. So he's using this um, arrow crystal and boost together without uh, a natural source. And that's just cute because we don't teach any of this. You just have to play it and like get used to it and start understanding the rules. Uh, and he's definitely understood Oof. deeply the mechanics that we've made here. Oh, oh my up. goodness. Three times. Ah, uh, there it is. Uh, one thing I definitely like about this game is that if one of your uh, speedrun strats fails, I think there's usually enough left over to like improvise with to make it through and not having to restart always. And it's actually really fun to see uh, the players adapting sometimes when that happens. Very, very smooth stuff happening here. The only bummer about speedrun is that we blow through all of the beautiful music so fast. Yeah. <laughs> so here we're, right. we're learning a little bit about who might be uh, whose memories we're watching, uh, that they're somehow connected to you. Which one's next? The rift. The rift crystal. So right there. That was so subtle, you probably wouldn't have never noticed, but he hit reset while he was way over there on the left, and it popped him right to the gate. So those small things that like cut off a bunch of time over the long run. So these crystals, uh, wherever you break uh, the crystal will open up a rift and you can basically kind of like swim inside the rift. Uh, it gives you places where you can jump out from. Uh, so he's going to be using that to his advantage here. What is this? Oh, it's going to... What is this strat? Oh, he's using a little jump glitch where you jump across the edge to re-trigger your jump. So he's getting a double jump essentially, and he's just skirting around the entire level that way. It's wow! So hard to do. I think we call it I cl think that cliff clipping. Is that what it's called? Clipping or cliff clipping yeah, CCs. I, mean, I don't yeah. know, but uh, we have some runners who go for low percent, where they're trying to break the least number of crystals, and so yeah. doing that kind of edge glitch is 
important for them, but it's so hard to our, get right. Our, our One of our runners, Oshiu, uh, she was very excited about this concept of low percent, and she has been nonstop playing the game with trying to use that edge glitch as much as possible uh, to beat levels using the fewest number of crystals. It's a whole new category of gameplay. So we don't, it, Evergate's not very, it's not grid based at all. Um, all hitboxes are custom hand drawn, uh, which means that in some cases, like uh, that last level, he was using the idiosyncrasies of the hitboxes to just like climb walls that you shouldn't be able to climb. And even once we found that sort of issue, I think we decided to keep him in the game because we, we thought it's more interesting. Like, as long as it doesn't break the game or completely make the level boring, uh, I think we decided to keep some of those glitches because they just make the game more interesting. Yep. If you studied the wall, you might find some uh, jump resets there. Yeah. All right. Here we have the Fierce Crystal. So you become this little ball of fire that you can control. Uh, and you fly around and break through things. It's pretty awesome. We have one of the most blessed and cursed mechanics here, the ball, which they <laughs> avoided using. It's totally avoided. It's, we have one more level that uses the ball in this game that everyone considers to be the most cursed level. Uh, that is a good example of it being used properly. So you bash your face into the ball to move it, but it has source on it, so its positioning is useful. Yeah, it's one of the few times where you can change where the source is and therefore like what shots are possible. But it's finicky because it's a ball <laughs> floating in the air. Here it is, the cursed level. <laughs> see if he gets, see if he gets it on the first try. Yeah. Oh, pretty good. It's looking good. Oh, he didn't even go for the second one. Oh, he went around. All right, good. He saved it. He saved it. Nicely done. Uh, well done. Usually people have a very hard time getting the ball aligned with that window correctly, which makes the level very difficult. Nice. All right, that's a beautiful one. <laughs> just like, when it happens so fast, you're like, just the precision on the shots are incredible. Okay, this level that was completely skipped right here, we left that glitch in on purpose, uh, but there's actually a huge epic race that you're running like uh, against all the source burning up. Uh, so it's a really epic level that I highly recommend you play the correct way if you own the game. One of the challenges we had was that, you know, because of the, the nature of the soul flame where it has to connect to the source, uh, we found that it was e mm, better for the user experience if like you could see most of the source on the page or sorry, on the, on the screen. So we kind of kept the puzzles to be close to one screen size, um, but that last one had, uh, you know, source across multiple screens. So you can do cute things where you can shoot off the page and, and hit crystals and sources that you can't see. And you only know that by playing the game and getting good at it. All right, this is one of our interesting mechanics here where you hit this radio switch and then this bombing run comes through and destroys everything in its path. So you have to take cover. Uh, so we saw that happening and we're gonna see it again. So it's really fun to see how sometimes the players dodge through this stuff just in time. And I think it, it's really fun to watch how precise some of their motion can be as far as getting to the end on time. Oh, look at that. Uh, so one of the things that also makes Evergate a little different um, is the, uh, we call it a coyote jump, um, but you can jump if you're on ground, but you could also walk off of ground, like off of a ledge and still jump whenever you want. As long as you've only done one jump, you can choose to save your jump for whenever you want to use it. Um, so. Like there, he jumped right close to the end of that trajectory. Uh, and that gives a lot of speed running options. Yeah, that one right there is so beautiful. So he jumps right to the exit gate, right as the bombs finish destroying the uh, barrier. Look at this, it's just so, faster than the camera. So fast. Oof. 
Ah, good save. Okay, some speed reading. So here we've found out who the memories are. I don't want to spoil that for you, um, but someone close to you. All right, what's next? Got the pool crystal, and then I think it's got to be jump cell, a neon. Yeah. Yeah. This was one of my favorite crystals to just play around with. Uh, so All for right, this, tell this one, works. yeah. Uh, so the jump cell crystal is something where you basically get a charge of a jump. And it's actually bigger than your normal jump. So you can see if you break two crystals without touching the ground, you get two charges. Those are the two rings around key. Uh, and that allows you to jump as many times as you have those charges. Wow. I don't think I've seen that one. Just ripped through that level. Yeah. Yeah, and also the jumps that you get from these are higher than normal jumps. So they're mm -hmm. it's better than just having a stored jump. It's like a, almost a the height of maybe a jump and a half or a double jump. But you lose all of them if you haven't, uh, well, if you land on the ground, um, they all disappear. Okay, this is a cool mechanic here. So we see those that these hexagonal regions um, prevent you from shooting in them. I guess that's not something that we've taught about, because um, at least in the speed run. So the idea is that you can't actually use the soul flame when you're inside those hexagonal regions, but there's a little generator that you can disable that lets you then start shooting oh, in that Mike, region. He got a jump cell at the very end. I don't even know which one that was. Yeah. I want to go back and like dissect that. Yeah, but they're doing a pretty good job at uh, not getting rid of any of the Wow! So beat all of these levels without disabling any of the generators. I think that's super impressive because they were designed that you have the levels were built that you have to break those generators to beat them. So I'm, I'm super impressed that you did it without breaking anything. All right, so here we have our first and only boss battle of Evergate. Uh, we we designed this boss battle really early on in Evergate development. Uh, and we just kept it in all the way to the end. Oh, do you want to explain oh. the artifact? Yeah. So this is a funny little exploit. Um, when we added the artifact system to the game, the game plan was to make the game easier for some people and also to augment the play style that maybe some people would have. Uh, so right here, we saw them using uh, the artifact, the magic arrow, something like Spirit that. Arrow. We're going to call it the magic arrow. Spirit arrow, yes, uh, which is effect effectively turns all uh, arrow crystals into homing arrows. Uh, so that makes this boss really easy to fight because you just need to touch the crystal from just about anywhere and it will home onto the target. So it makes this boss fight really easy. Typically, you'd have to jump all over the place to uh, to take the proper shot. All right, this crystal is definitely the most different of them all uh, because it's not really a crystal. Um, in these levels, you can select which crystals are going to be used in, this, in the level. So there are like toggles around. You can see here there's four of them. And if you just hit those toggles, all of the crystals on the page will, will change to that. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Sneaky. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Right underneath the level. Yeah. <laughs> this okay, one's so ridiculous. Oh, he's slowing yeah. down. Interesting. So pretty much there's a swap crystal selector at the end of the level. And if you know that, you can just shoot it way off screen. Requires some precision, though. And he's skipping so much. It's incredible. All right, so now we start to introduce these kind of growing danger zones. So you have to kind of make it through the level pretty fast. Now, I don't think that's going to affect him because he's already going real fast. Oh, nice. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Just cut out that whole right side of the puzzle. 
Oh, he's going for it. He didn't take a single crystal type. He's just <laughs> falling with nothing. <laughs> oh, it makes it look so easy. Uh, all right. So that's the end of those core levels. Now we are coming up on the final sequence where we go into the void here. All right, get ready for some speed reading, everyone. Ah, so this is whose memories we were in. And he's not too happy with key. All right, so we're going in. I like how Black Rose's cursor is just twitching. He's just <laughs> moving it around rapidly. In, He's ready. In deep, insightful uh, insight into how the mind and hand of a speedrunner work. Oh, look at this shot. Wow. Sniped it. That's a great strat for beating this level. So typically the bombs would fall on that barrier that he broke, but he broke it in advance using an arrow to open up the exit gate. So that's a really clever way to make it through that. So you're seeing here that there are like, where we're in now is just like a, an amalgamation of all of the like memories that we've already been. Oh, he's just gonna run on top. He's pulled a Super mm -hmm. Mario Brothers <laughs> off to the warp. Also, notice that we're playing as a different character right now. So we're no longer playing as Key, but we're playing as Ha, this this secondary character, and they're going on their own journey of discovery right now. Oh, oh ooh, we no! missed it! Missed it! Oh no! <laughs> there we go. So he left his wow. jump for after. There. Uh, he broke the swap crystal. That's, that allowed him to both swap over there and get up and over. So now we're coming into at least my favorite part of the game. So where we're Go for it. Yeah, where we're trying to escape the void and we, we, we do a little twist on the mechanic where now we don't need crystals and your soul flame is imbued with the power of the crystal instead. So we're here, what? what? And then he reset to yeah. jump ahead. I've never seen that. That's crazy. Yeah. So the game has some <laughs> checkpoints in it <laughs> at the different phases. So he, he just <laughs> reaches the checkpoint and then resets to, to move himself a bit further forward. Classic speed running strats. Rapid firing the, the rift. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. And this is uh, the jump cell. Uh, so now he's just rapid firing multiple jumps. Let's watch this. All right. Okay. Now we're at the fierce crystal. Okay. Ooh. Close call there. Well done, Black Rose. That is beautiful. Well so that's the done. end of the uh, the core gameplay, pretty much. Now there's a bit of uh, speed talking that needs to happen, yep. some speed reading. Uh, but this is kind of the narrative climax of the game happening from here to the end. But he just has to do some walking now. Get some closure. Mm-hmm. Unskippable cutscenes, unbelievable. I just want to uh, highlight just like how fun it is to have a speedrunning community on Discord, um, where people give us feedback about like you know what they can do and what they want to do. Um, and we've we like Ariel mentioned earlier, we've made sure to jump in and like tweak the levels just a little bit if need be to kind of support some of their crazy strats that they've been uh, devising. So. Um,
that music though. Hmm. <laughs> The climactic coming together, mm -hmm. rising out of the void. All right, we made it. So you flew out of the storm and we're going back to the library. Now, we're not going to get the, to read this because the speed reading might be too fast, but there's a moment here where the, uh, the, the Grove Keeper is talking to, to the two main characters here, and it's like, oh, wow, you caused a bit of trouble, didn't you? And everyone's always laughing at us for that line because you, the whole idea is that you practically destroyed the entire afterlife. Uh, so saying, you caused a little bit of trouble is such a funny thing to say. <laughs> As he's in uh, tattered robes. Yeah. The boss. <laughs> we can finally go through the Evergate and be reincarnated. Leaving the door open for Evergate 2. Right, Arya? Right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you in, a, see you in five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. Congratulations, uh, Black Rose, for an awesome nice world record speed run of 30 minutes in 58 seconds very very impressive thanks guys for joining us on the speed run uh, if you're interested in playing evergate yourself it's on uh, steam switch xbox and playstation 5 feel free to check it out um, also please if you're interested in speed run or just want to talk to us the devs or people who are interested in evergate we have an evergate discord channel that you should definitely check out thank you so much oh great we did it we did it